Technology is constantly advancing in all aspects of our lives, but with these advances come folks who want to use them to separate honest people from their money. What can the state do to stop it? Let's find out by spending five minutes with State Representative Karen Bobeck. Representative Bobeck, thanks for joining me. Oh, it's a pleasure as always. Thank you. Now, you're focusing specifically on, uh, at least for now, on communications technology. Talk Correct. about that. Correct. Well, we found out, in my district in particular, that some people were being contacted, and on their caller ID, there would be something that would be sound familiar, sound legitimate, and actually, it was spoofing. <clears throat> For example, you might look at your caller ID when your phone rings and they would have something that you would say, oh, it's got to be my bank or it's got to be affiliated with the state. And you would answer the phone and be asked questions that really is impacting your identity. And many times people would give information because of the spoof, not realizing that this was something that was wrong and it is we want to make it strictly illegal to protect the citizenry of the state. So the idea of the spoofing, uh, using the word spoof, is that uh, someone's pretending to be something that they're not intentionally Correct. and for malicious reasons. Correct. As you mentioned, technology is a wonderful thing and uh, we have so many wonderful devices now to help us, but in the same token, technology can hurt us if we're not very careful. And that's what this bill is designed to do, to protect people against spoofing with their caller ID. So what penalties uh, or how would it deal with, uh, with, uh, with fines or with anyone caught spoofing? Well, of course, it would involve jail time and a monetary. There would, there would be uh, money involved along with jail time because it's a serious offense. Uh, you've also introduced another technology bill I want to uh, have you explain, and that was House Bill 530. What would that do? Yes. Now, that has to do with spyware on a wireless device. And what that means is, again, with technology being what it is, people can acquire different devices that can actually usurp the intent of your cell phone and they could track you and they could steal your identity in some cases even video you with your own cell phone and that's something that we have to be very cognizant of we protect people via the computer as best we can but now we have to worry about our cell phones where do these bills stand right now what form are they in and, and what part of the process well, the legislation is written and we're looking for co-signers then it will be presented to a committee My understanding probably consumer affairs committee will take it up and hopefully I'll have the time to go into the committee hearing and vet the situations because these are bills that are based on real problems that I've experienced in my district with my own constituents they've got to be addressed. I imagine probably the biggest group of victims when it comes to using this kind of high technology are your elderly, your seniors, some of which it might come about just because they're simply hard of hearing and they can't really hear everything that's going on. And As you say, they imagine that the person they're talking to is someone legitimate. Absolutely. The most vulnerable and not only the elderly. I find with spoofing it seems to zoom in on our elderly population, although we can all be victims of that. Right. Now, with the spyware, many times it's the young adults oh. who are given the cell phone by the parent that the parent wants to make sure, you know, they have access. It's like an umbilical cord, so to speak. Parents feel safe when their children have the cell phone and that they could contact them or the child can contact. For example, if they're in a sports event, they're, they got out early or they need a ride or, Mom, I'm here. So that's been working out it seems fairly well and by the way my legislation would not impact any type of device that a parent would give or monitor their own children that's included in the bill that would not have any impact on a parental right as far as tracking their child if they go shopping in the mall right. or whatever but um, we find that it's impacting the younger generation with people trying to you know to steal their identity or to track them or to bully them so it's, it's a, a broad range, it's a great bill, and I'm surely hoping that we get to see it passed here in Pennsylvania. Well, both these bills do, as, I, as you uh, intend, to levy penalties and to stop these practices which are unethical, if not illegal, yes. illegal actually. But I guess, in closing, the best uh, thing people can do, uh, instead of waiting for government to help them out, is to help themselves out. And, and the best advice to take is to, uh, to exercise 
is not to give out any personal information to people you're not sure about uh, their identity of. Absolutely, and a rule of thumb when I have my senior expos or my children's expos, rule of thumb, if somebody's calling you, the red flag should go up. Give no information. You could always call them back. Now, if you're calling an agency or you're calling your credit card company with the number provided, that's a different story because you're initiating the contact. But if somebody's contacting you, you're not obliged. Get their information. Investigate before you would call or give any type of information. Call my office. Uh, we're, we're so in tune to this, we can give them more advice. Very good. Representative Bobak, thank you for this update on your legislation. Thank you. If you have any comments or questions about this or any other legislative top, pop, topic, please contact Representative Bobak. You'll see her contact information in just a moment. Thanks for spending five minutes with State Representative Karen Bobak.